Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about how to deal with competition. Competition's good, I'm telling you. And if you are in business or thinking about getting into business, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. If you want, skip to three minutes. Uh, that'll pass all of this uh, talking here. But uh, if you're new, have a look around. Hopefully, you dig the show. There's 220 plus episodes to catch up on, a ton of content, hundreds of hours. Well, well over 100 hours at least. Um, so, definitely check that out. It's on SoundCloud, everywhere podcasts are if you're a listener. Uh, if you're a watcher or you want to have it on your computer and you don't run podcast platforms, it's also on YouTube. So, cool. Check it out. Uh, if you are not new and you are one of the cool kids, huh? look at the stickers. See the stickers? If you're a certified cool kid, that means you watch every episode. And, of course, you order through me because shameless plug. That's why I do what I do is to make cheddar by putting in orders. If you have orders you'd like me to put in, I would love to do so. My number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. You can call me. Text me even better. Let me know. Yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Do me the biggest favor. Let me put that uh, order in for you. That would be absolutely epic. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to AWC Magazine. If you're listening right now, that means you care about your company already. So, like, why not? Like, get the magazine. American Window Cleaner Magazine, full of pictures and articles, and uh, some really, really cool, cool things. Uh, Also, uh, old pictures, which is uh, some of my favorite things. Uh, Rigs and digs sections, which just talk about, like, uh, companies, where they're at. So stinking cool. Get it? And then also you get a sticker sheet. Uh, That's where all these awesome stickers from behind me come. Uh, So definitely get all of that. Go to awcmag.com. Okay. Um, yeah. So today, that's what we're doing. We're talking about, um, we're talking about uh, competition. Competition is super healthy. I'm telling you. And a lot of people, when uh, competition comes up, they always say that um, they're trying to match their prices or they're flooded with it and they can't sell anything because there's so much competition out there but that's not true it's really really not true the big thing with competition is it is healthy for a market now here's something that you have to kind of think about competition competition is good for you and i'll tell you why competition is good because They're going to be advertising, they're going to be talking to their customers, and if they're not doing a good job in conveying why you hire them, they're actually selling your service. People will call you and be like, I don't know if uh, you were the company I used last time. Well, no, it doesn't look like you're in our system, but I'd love to give you a shot. I'd love love to show you what we're about, right? And then you can go ahead and sell your services. They're also going to be driving trucks around, and a lot of times people don't do things quite right, and even if they do things quite right and they have a truck wrap and it says window washing and there's a phone number it just triggers people to be like oh window washing they're gonna go look up window cleaning look up window washing and find you so there's a lot of benefits to competition now you have to have competition um be a good thing that's if you don't even talk to them you could be arch nemesis with your competition and still get some benefits to having more window cleaners out there if they're out there, it gets people thinking. Their trucks are out there. Their advertising out there. It gets people thinking. And just like when you advertise, you're advertising for your competition too. Right? People see your ads, they're not going to call you directly. Unless they have it right in front of you, they read it all off, then they'll call you directly. But it gets people thinking. Oh, yeah. You know what? I saw uh, an ad for window cleaning the other day. Man, it makes me think. Look at my windows. Right? I saw window cleaners uh, downtown. Made me think of my own windows. I gotta call somebody. It gets them to call, and sometimes just inherently it's gonna be you. But there is a right and wrong way to talk to competition, to have competition, to deal with competition. And let me just say, let me just say, if you have a lot of competition 
and you think that it's the competition is the reason that you don't have as much work as you do because you're flooded or there's a lot of low ballers or there's a whatever, I have a hard truth for you. The hard truth is that's wrong because there will always be McDonald's. There will always be a $1.50 cheeseburger, which they used to be a dollar cheeseburgers, right? Actually, it used to be like 60 cents. Nobody makes a 60 cent cheeseburger anymore unless you live in 1950, right? But not everybody's going to McDonald's. I would go to a burger joint and spend $12, $13 on a burger, right? If you're at a fancy restaurant, you may spend almost $20 on a burger. That doesn't mean there's not a place for all of it. What it means is that there's more than the fact it's a burger, right? So if you think that it's their competition, ah, we got so much competition, that's why. I've had people go out of business. And listen, another hard truth is I don't ever want anybody to go out of business. That sucks. Like closing a shop sucks. Closing window cleaning company, closing a service company sucks. The big thing is that people will find excuses. Excuses are like buttholes everybody's got one some stink worse than others right there you go quote of the day put on a t-shirt but the truth is is that if you blame it on the competition that's what you're looking for but you can always sell there's always a spot for a luxury company there's always a spot for something now if you're trying to charge somebody a million dollars for window cleaning it's going to be really really hard for you to justify why right but if the next guy's at 59 bucks and you're at $200, even though that sounds like a huge jump, $200 is still easily explained, right? There's value to it. Don't think of competition as being bad, but there's some right ways to do it. First thing you have to do with competition is know who's around. A big thing with competition is when people first get in, they're like, oh, uh, yeah, I just started window cleaning. I'm thinking about starting. I'm going to be, you know, launching in about a month. So I'm calling a bunch of my competitors, getting their prices on my house. And, and don't do that. Don't waste somebody else's time to better yourself, right? That sucks. That, you can find out pricing a lot of other ways than to waste somebody else's time. Because here's the thing. I also don't want to necessarily waste my time giving an estimate to you or somebody who is just starting a window cleaning company who is not going to use my service and I'm just wasting my time. So don't do that. Don't be that person. But know who's around. Do Google searches for all of the terms. Like this stuff takes time. Don't do one search and go, I know. Because you're also going to pop up if you have a website, more than likely towards the top. It's not always because you're ranked that well. It's because your computer remembers. Go incognito. Do a search. Go that way. Right? Find out who's actually in the area. Write them all down. Know who they are. Know where they are. Are they franchised? Are they not a franchise? Are they located? Are they there? How long have they been in business? What services do they offer? Know who they are. A big thing with competition is people are more scared of them. Oh, these guys, they start all, they start all day. Every day there's a new company. Okay, cool. Those aren't people you're worried about. You shouldn't be worried about competition in general, but you should know who they are. Right? When a boxer fights, they watch videotape of their opponent. They do everything they can to know what their opponent does. And sometimes it's so they can counter it, right? But sometimes they can see it happening. If you do that with your competition, you know what's happening. A big thing is, is that we're not necessarily focused on price. We'll get to that later. We're not focused on price. Don't think of this as a price work. It is absolutely not. But what it is, is knowledge of what they're going to do. Now, say they have sales, they always do Christmas sales, but you know, whatever the time they do, they do a big promotion, they do. Those are times where you do promotions to kind of capture some of that mojo, get things flowing, right? Find out if they do gutter cleaning. If they don't do gutter cleaning, push that you do gutter cleaning, right? Find areas that everyone's lacking and explain why. Now, find out their guarantees, Find out uh, why they guarantee what they do, what they guarantee. Find out how your guarantees are better. Find out what they do and who they are. 
That's the big one. I think in this whole thing, probably actually other than pricing, a lot of people based on pricing, it's super, super hard, uh, but people focus on the pricing. We'll get to that again. But a lot of times people don't know who's in their area. I knew, and this again, I've sold my company, right? I'm just some dummy with a microphone, so you just listen to some guy talk. But I knew all of the companies that were in my area, all of the companies right outside my area that traveled into my area. I knew the owner's name. I knew what they did, how many employees they ran, what big contracts they had, what they were known for, right? And I created my company... Uh, advertising, promotion, what I pushed myself for in their absences. That is a really, really big piece of this puzzle, is knowing who is around you, really knowing them. Now, mind you, when we talk about stuff, this is not just like, oh, I got an hour, let's do it. This is like an ongoing thing. Like, this is for you to sit here right now and go, you know what? I'm going to make the plan. By December 31st, I'm going to have everything written down. Because this may take some time. Maybe you put a whole day into it. You're like, what? What are you wasting a whole... Yes, this is all of this. Building a company, there are certain times that you have to do spend some time researching or doing something that takes a long time. This is one of those. Knowing your competition, really knowing them. Right? Anyway, I digress. I, I always... Again, this isn't any of you. It's not. No one in specific, but... No one in particular. But people will call and be like, oh, you know, we'll talk about uh, something, you know, uh, USP or something. People go, oh, yeah, my USP is, um, uh, you know, I thought about it. It's, uh, uh, I like dogs or, you know, whatever. They put it out there and it's like, you didn't put any time into that. Well, ah, I just like, that's what people go to. You didn't actually think about that. You just pulled it out of your brain. If that's the kind of crap you're doing for your company, then that is why the things are not going as well as you'd like them to. Like the guys who really put the time in, those are the guys. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an owner-operator, right? If you're the only person that is doing everything and doing the cleaning, you just have more, less time, I should say, to get it all done. But a lot of the times, I tell people, if you're getting out of the truck, the best thing to do when you're getting out of the truck is to get out of the truck. And the reason is is because there's so many other things you could spend your time on that build a better company stronger. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about pricing, though. A lot of times people say, okay, well, John over there, he charges only $3 a window. I have to lower my price. Wrong. I'm going to use this. I've used this a thousand times. If you've listened, you've heard it before. But I'm going to sell something to you. I'm going to sell it to you for either a dollar a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Which would you pay? Most of you, like if I got to pay something, I'm going to give you a dollar because I don't know what you're selling. Some of you are like, well, I don't want to go over the cheapest, so I'll pay you a hundred bucks, but I'm not going a thousand. None of you are going to give me a thousand dollars without knowing what it is, right? None of you. Absolutely none of you are paying a thousand dollars but I don't tell you what it is. Now, if I don't tell you what it is, and I don't sell you on the value of what this thing is I'm selling, all you have to go on is price. You're always going to only be looking at price. But now if I told you, told you that I have brand new Ferraris, I'm a Ferrari dealer and we're having a sale, $1,000 for a Ferrari, what would you do? You would probably buy five of them, Right? Now that you know what it is, now that you know the value, you're paying $1,000. No questions asked. None of you, no matter how hard up you are on money, could get a brand new Ferrari for $1,000, would not jump on that opportunity. That's what you're doing with your company. The other guy, John over there for $3 a window, he says, hey, my name is John. I'm selling this window cleaning for $3 a window. And they go, wow, that's a great price. John will hire you. Because that's all they found out. They know you're getting clean windows for $3 a paint. The point is, we're a luxury business. If you like it or not, we're a luxury business. You have to then go in and say, hey, here's what I offer. 
we have a seven day rain guarantee. Yes, that's a real thing. If you're not doing rain guarantees, absolutely do it. We have a seven day ring guarantee, a 100% satisfaction guarantee. We have $2 million of insurance coverage and we have 500 five star reviews on Google. We'll give you the best experience all the way down to our uh, um, picture ID'd techs that go through a strict starred training program, all the way down to our, you know, no shoes in the house policy. We do all that with giving you great results on the windows that you'll never have to worry about because of our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Before we leave your property, we want to walk your house with you to make sure you don't see any issues. And if it rains within seven business days and it dirties the window, we will come back and clean those, make those windows look beautiful for free. If you put this whole picture, you can do everything you want. We have nothing but this most state-of-the-art technology. We run all the best equipment. Our guys are blah, blah, blah. Our lead technicians have been here for six years. Our operations officer has been here for seven. Our, you know, trucks, these are our trucks and our fleet and our... If you sell all of that and John comes up and goes, Hey, I'm John, $3 a window. Those other people go, Okay, this guy... This guy is $10 a window, but I get all that stuff. Like, making it so that you are almost stupid to not buy a $1,000 Ferrari. That's pricing. People are always worried about pricing because they're not their target market. You're like, well, I'd go with the cheapest guy. Well, yeah, because you're not your target market. And by the way, if you believe that, You have not sold yourself. You cannot sell a product that you do not believe in. There is a window cleaning product. If you talk to me, uh, by the way, I'm a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. If you'd like anything, 862-312-2026. Anyway, (laughs) if you call me or text me and you ask me, what do you like? What about these two? Which are better? Which are, I believe 100% in our products. And if I don't, There are certain products I won't name by name here. I don't like. I don't like them. I feel like vacuum cleaner parts. I don't like this particular brand. It doesn't mean that other people don't like it. I don't like it, but I'm not going to sell you that product unless you tell me you want it. If you say, what do you like? I'm not going to tell you, I want that. I I like that one. Not one time in any history of our company, Window Cleaner Resource, have we ever sold something because there was more margin in it, because it was the hot sheet item or because we're like push those absolutely everything we sell we believe in 100 percent. otherwise i'm not selling it to you or at least i'm going to tell you i don't like it and it's up to you if you don't have that same idea in your business and you don't believe wholeheartedly that you're worth the extra money or your value is there you need to reevaluate everything you need to figure out why your value is where it is You have to show your value. If you can't show it to yourself, you're not going to show it to somebody else. Pricing is not the issue with competition. Remember that. A big thing is USP. We've talked about this 100 billion times. USP is unique selling proposition or point or whatever. A USP is the why you. If I got 10 window cleaners lined up, you're all in the same area and you all are the same dollar amount and you all are the same, you know, whatever you're all the same i go down the row of each and this is what we kind of talked about before your value but i go down and i say why would i hire you um well i I clean windows okay next one why do i hire you well i clean a better window i don't no you don't the clean window is a clean window that's a definition next person the next person comes in and says our unique selling point is that we Our entire goal of our company is to make sure that you are absolutely blown away by the experience of hiring us. That is our number one goal, is to have the most flawless, comfortable, familiar, and great experience in any service you've ever bought. And we do everything we can to give you the experience of having clean windows. 
They go to the next guy. Why do we hire you? Well, I also want a good experience, right? The unique selling point is that you put everybody together. Why does somebody buy you? If you have not thought of the most important question, the absolute top tier question. By the way, if you have a USP, go on YouTube. We don't get a lot of comments on YouTube. I would love to have more comments. But go on there and just comment. Tell me what your USP is. Think about it. Do not tell me that it's because people just like me. Like, uh, man, if I wasn't cleaning windows, they wouldn't hire me. That's absolutely wrong. That means your staff would suck. I had staff so well. People didn't know me. I'd answer the phones. And I wouldn't even really book a lot of that. But I'd talk to some people on the phone. I'd have people walk up to me with a check when they're done with the job. Because we had the flu come through. So I ended up having to work with our operations guy for a day. Guy walked out with a check. He goes, oh, here you go. Actually, I'm going to give this to Gary if it's okay. It was our operations officer. Absolutely fine. Right? Whoever that person is has to be awesome. It doesn't have to be you. But anyway, putting it out there. Your USP, think about that. Number one question in business, your USP. Your USP is based on what you do, and it can't be something that somebody else does. Otherwise, it's not unique. That's why you need to know who you are around. That will dictate what your USP can be. Figure out your USP. It's a big one. Don't poach or sabotage your competition. The biggest thing I see people doing is like, I ripped up yard signs. Ah, I, I, I saw somebody was putting hanging stuff on mailboxes, so I got rid of it. That's an absolute BS. That's a baloney sandwich for you uh, people. By the way, I don't swear, if you're new to the show, I've never sworn in the 200 and something episodes. I've had people on who have. Uh, anyway. Um, but you, you, you sabotage someone and their hard work is just being taken for that's it shows that you're scared and weak if you're sabotaging other people absolutely absolutely scared and weak because here's the thing if you don't believe in your company you're scared somebody else will get the stuff if you're not believing in your advertising you're scared somebody else is going to get the stuff the jobs the customers that's why you sabotage don't sabotage be better listen here is another little little tidbit that I always I live life on. Everybody's on a pillar, right? Everybody's standing on a pillar. Some people's pillars are way up here. Yours might be down here. There's two ways to get to that person's level or above. Two ways. You can pull out a hatchet and start chopping their pillar down, right? Talking crap about them. Destroying what they have, trying to bring them on, starting rumors or talking, getting them down, boom, boom, boom. They get crushed down, everything you did, now you're at the same level. Maybe you crushed them even more and now you're above them. That is not the way to do it. The way to do it is to raise your pillar. Raise your pillar. Don't bring other pillars down. That's one of the big things. Don't poach. Don't be an a-hole. Just don't. There is no need for that because, again, we're building a competition-happy area. One thing you can do, though, is a buyout letter. Now, a buyout letter is very, very simple. Don't be like, I want to buy your company. Make it. I would send out letters like, hey, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning. I just want to let you know that we are always in the market for new route jobs, customer lists, Customers in general, um, if you ever get to that moment where you think you want to retire or you want to go to another career or you're just ready to uh, move on to something else, we would love the opportunity to buy your customers, something along those lines. Make it really nice. Make it just put it out there and send it regularly. Get a list. You know all the customers. I'm sorry, not the customers. You know all the other companies in your area. Every six months, send them something. Send them something in the middle of winter. Send them something in the middle of summer. Right? Best times to buy companies. Put it out there so they know who you are. But be really, really nice about it. But the biggest thing about dealing with competition, the biggest thing is to 
make friends. Now, sometimes, this is probably the biggest thing people talk to me about. They're like, dude, I met my competition. We're friends. We went out. I bought them you know, a drink. We had lunch. And the, their whole world changes. The most common comment, question, or um, response, uh, text, whatever, email is about competition. When somebody finally becomes friendly with their competition, how it changes the dynamic. It changes the dynamic. I will tell you a story, and this is not necessarily going to happen to you, yada, yada, right? But here's a story. I saw this guy, and his name was Nick. And I saw Nick every probably two weeks. He was in the same route on the same day as our guys were. Now, I had a salesman uh, also, but I would go and do selling on top of that, right? If you're trying to build a route up, you really need to do that. What I would do a lot of the times too is uh, we would run with the salesman and we would hit an area while our guys were there, right? We would hit an area with the sales and the new ones, right? They're cleaning a storefront. We would go on, hey, it's Jersey with XYZ. We're across the street. We're doing this, 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 and we'd love to get you on the list. Here's your price. We could start today, get your free cleaning if you want to get signed up because we're in the area. So I saw this guy often. I would always make it a, 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 a thing to stop. Hey, man, how are you? Good. Oh, awesome. And more and more, we'd see him like, hey, you know. They realize that you're not being uh, a poacher. You're not doing any of that. That you're just genuinely nice and want to know. I built up such a, 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 a relationship with this guy. And I would always say, hey, man, when you're up in, in uh, my town, which is the one above, I, let me know. Shoot me. I want to just take you out to lunch. We'll just hang out. Give me like an hour. We'll, we'll just talk. Whatever. You can come see our place if you want and, and go from there. Finally, after about a year. He says, yeah, yeah just, uh, I'll, I'll be up there actually tomorrow. You want to grab that lunch here he's talking about? Yes, absolutely, man. I will treat you to lunch. We'll see you at 12. He comes up. I go through our facility. He's blown blown away. Blown away. He goes, man, I just, I had no idea. You know, uh, window cleaning for me has just kind of been a struggle. It's not really my thing. He ended up owning like a lawn care company also and wanted to do more of that. He gave me, he said, you know what? I don't want to do the window cleaning side of it anymore. I'm going to give you all my customers. I'm going to give you all my customers, my routes, my everything. Just make sure they're taken care of. I really like my customers. I don't want a bad name, and I know that you're going to take care of them. Awesome. Awesome. I was given a company. It wasn't big. It wasn't you know a life-changing thing, but that's what happens when competition is friendly with you. I have competition in my area that I've used polls for. This is before I worked here. My pole broke literally on a job. It was a two-day job. I called him up. He's like, yeah, come get it, man. I'm not using it tomorrow. I've had other ones where um, I've brought guys in on projects. I have had other ones where I've been brought in. And my guys have been brought in. I've been uh, on projects where they have used my employees on the weekends. My employees wanted to pick up some extra time. They're behind on a project. We shoot them over there. I have been given more work, tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in work from competition, just jobs either they can't do or don't want to do or just out of their scope or their realm or the whatever because I've been nice to competition. I've made friends. There's always going to be somebody who's a jerk. I get that. It's cool. I had two companies in my area. That, by the way, they were both one name, you know, companies like... uh Tim's window cleaning that style. Not you, Tim, if you're listening. I don't know Tim's window cleaning, but there's probably one out there. But um, both of those guys, I would, I would, hey, how's it going? They'd be like, hey, and like go back to cleaning. And I'm like, all right, well, I would try and try and try. And then, yeah, didn't happen. And then uh, actually had one of them uh, pass away, which was sad. He was uh, in the area for a really, really long time. And uh, I was in talks with the kid. The kid was like, yeah. Like, you know, we've seen you all around and, and he always mentioned you, you know, we thought ended up that the kid took the company and uh, we didn't end up buying that one, but they even knew about it. So even when you think you're not getting through, you are right. But everybody else was so nice. If I saw a new window cleaner, guess what I'm doing? First thing 
I say, man, I've never seen them before. Stop. Hey, man, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning. I just want to say, what's up, man? Welcome to the area. And they're like, whoa. Oh, sweet. Ah, right. Here's my number, man. Call me. Let's uh, let's hook up, dude. I'd love to know your backstory or come show you my office. Maybe I got some old equipment if you're right. All of that stuff. What happens is it created our company as the like go-to for the area. Everybody knew us. Everybody was in our shop. I got no secrets. But the big thing was, was that with that, it created this huge network. It's so worth it to do that. That's how you deal with competition. It's not poaching. It's not outsourcing. It's not trying to be a better price. It's not any of that. What it is, is being friendly and creating a good relationship because we're all out there to do the same thing. You can't possibly have every window in your city. You just can't. That's why there's 10 companies. But be nice with them. Use each other for good. Don't hurt each other. I'm telling you. Competition is not bad when you do it right. And more importantly, make sure you know your USP and why you stand out. Because your competition's there, regardless if you like it or not. And your competition is also selling to the same people you are. So tell me why I should buy from you. Either way, there you go. That's an episode of Nation. If it's your first time here, uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad. Uh, By the way, if you're new in window cleaning or you're old in window cleaning, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Go get this magazine. I'm telling you. It's absolutely epic. And uh, there's uh, nice advertisements sometimes for a really good podcast. Anyway, uh, go get it. It's really, really cool to have a magazine. Um, You can uh, have, listen, follow, watch. Really good journalists that are in there. Awesome pictures. And, of course, the sticker sheets. Also, get the sticker sheets if you want. There's actually a sticker club. It's like $4.99 a month. You get sticker sheet every single month. Go join that if you don't want the magazine. Uh, awcmag.com go get that it's absolutely epic because i said so more importantly actually but equally important get uh your supplies through me i am your guy when it comes to supplies that's my main gig this is how i make my cheddar how i can afford these fancy shirts that were free by the way these are super dope um we sell them on the site but they're like the zip ups pullovers whatever they're called anyway super dope uh, give me a call. My number cell phone is 862-312-2026. Yes, it's a cell phone. Yes, you can call me, text me, whatever. Text me. Put everything in your cart. Make sure you're logged in and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Man, go buy yourself some brand name Band-Aids or whatever. And uh, I'd love to put that in for you. So do both of them. Become an absolutely epic cool kid. You got the AWC magazine, American Window Cleaner magazine. Been around as I kick my computer. Been around since 1986. It's been a magazine since 1986. Anyway, uh, go get that and uh, buy your supplies from me. Either way, go out there and until next week, go out there and be epic.